Um, anything that's not written down, we won't be able to grade. So write down all this stuff. You're going to have two minutes to decide which one you want to make. Ready? Begin. <laughs>
five minutes. Remember, we're not just looking at just the building. We're also looking at the motivation. Are you encouraging each other? And the evaluation. Are you checking in? Do we have enough time left? What can we do to change the design? Will it work? Will it change? Ready? Five minutes. Go. Go.
So first there's a couple um, there's a couple of apologies I'd like to make. First apology I'd like to make is to the Agassi team who uh, weren't aware they were gonna be here today. So I apologize for not creating a table for them. Um, that was that was our mistake. The second apology I'd like to make is that we weren't I wasn't very clear with the directions on the computer decision and on the planning about using the marshmallows to open things up. So I apologize for that. That being said, um, in this discussion, I, I don't really want to talk about those things that happened. I more want to talk about the process that we went through. So let's talk about your decision. Um, we had two minutes to do that. Can I have uh, raise hands? People thought that was easy to make the, the decision we're going to do in two minutes. Uh, raise your hand if, if you think it was hard to make that decision in two minutes. We have one. Ty, why was it hard?
quadrant diagram, Turing is training with Mercedes and Chris Plummer. Does everyone remember that? Yeah. Awesome. So I'm not going to review that with you. Um, I'm sure you remember most of it. Does everyone remember what quadrant we're aiming to spend most of our time in? What? Our, aiming to spend most of our time in quadrant two, so we're not stressed out. So I'm going to give you four quick points on how to put yourself in that quadrant two. So the first point is you got to identify your roles. What are our roles within our life? What are our roles? So, before you set your goals, what are our roles? I have my role, I have a role as brother, family, coordinator, core member, so on and so forth. We all have our own roles. You have to know what those roles are within your life from week to week. Then, the second step is to set your goals in those roles. Matt talked about goal setting. Now you know what your goals are to associate with each of those roles. So, as a brother, I have to make sure I make a phone call on his birthday. I have to know what I'm doing now. As a core member, I have to communicate with my teacher on a weekly basis. I have to recognize that goal to make sure I achieve that goal. And as a mentor, I have to make sure I'm reading that book along with my students so I can keep up to date on what he's reading and we can increase his reading fluency level. So, again, that's recognizing what are our roles within our life and then setting our goals according to those roles. The third part is then scheduling your priorities, not prioritizing your schedule. Everyone's familiar with the infamous to-do list. You write up a list, this is what I need to do this week based on my goals, and hopefully I'll get it done by Friday. I need to have it done by Friday. This is the wrong way to set up your schedule. Your schedule should not look like this. Because you typically end up on Friday scrambling to make each of these things happen. What you need to do is you need to schedule your priorities. You need to have a schedule for your week that tells you when you're going to be doing these things. When am I going to work on these specific projects to make them happen? When am I going to have the time to make this happen? If I have a to-do list, that's great. I can cross those off. But if I have a schedule that tells me where I'm going to do those and when I'm going to do those, then I know that they're going to be cheap. And I'm going to have all that free time on Friday. I'm going to get to Friday, and I'm not going to be stressed out or burnt down. I'm all set. So again, that's what are my roles? What are my goals? And it's um, scheduling your priorities, not prioritizing your schedule. And finally, it's just adapting daily. From day to day, you can have that schedule on the board, but we don't know when something spontaneous is going to come up. We don't know what's going to happen next, and we have to wake up each morning and remember, okay, so I'm actually not going to be able to help to give my brother that phone call at 6 o'clock. How can I adapt that to make it happen? Maybe I'll call him before work, wake him up early in the morning, really annoying. So just remember to adapt daily. That schedule will not always be perfect for you. So you have little sticky notes with you right now. I want you to take those out and put them in front of you. And I want, I want to challenge you to write down a role that you might have recently been neglecting in your life. For example, I would write down, my, as a brother, you know, I wasn't really familiar. I wasn't really paying attention to his birthday comment. I actually him one day late. So I want you to challenge, challenge you to write down, that, write down a role that you've been struggling with, and then write down a goal that's associated with that role. I want one role and goal for both your professional life and your personal life. There are two poster boards. When you're done writing that down, I want you to put it on the poster board corresponding. They're on both sides of the Civic Forum, written in my excellent handwriting. So please, by all means, go do that, then get up, put it back, and get back to your seats, and we'll talk about it. Sorry, I had a question. Um, so, if we were looking at what was going on in the post it now, I want you to write down a role that you might have been struggling with or neglecting within your life, whether it be like um, a sibling, a um, son or daughter, whether it be like a best friend. Find that role that you've been neglecting in your life, and then write down a goal associated with that role. And then I want, for each of you, I want one that involves your personal life and one that involves your professional life. And I'd like, love for you to place them on the two poster boards in the room and then return to your seats. Does anyone have any questions about that? Is that, is that clear or not?
So the strategies I'm going to teach you, and uh, the processes and techniques and the mindsets are something that has really been important to me in my life. Um, without these things, I probably would never have been able to be a core member, connect with my team, connect with the kids. Whether it'll be as good for you as it was for me, sorry, I don't, I don't know. But what I can, <laughs> what I can tell you is that if you use these processes and strategies and techniques on someone who you're having trouble connecting with, or someone who you who you have had trouble making that connection with in the past, a kid that you're really having trouble with, it'll help. It won't magically solve everything overnight, but it'll start to make that change where you can't connect with them. So, can I have a volunteer to read the quote of the presentation? <laughs> Wait, where's it going? Emery? How's it going? Oh, here we go. Tina. Hi, Tina and Matilda with your gardens. Shots fired. beginning of the presentation with those pictures, I want to talk about how this applies to communication. First, we're going to watch a little clip. Maybe some language used in this clip. Um, so whenever you hear yelling, if you're not comfortable with that, I would cover your ears. Second thing I want to say, I want you to get a little background on what's happening here. Um, there's a character in here, the teenager you're going to see, his name is Dwayne. And Dwayne set a goal, to become a pilot. Right? So he has worked for that goal. He's going to battle silence and hasn't spoken since he decided to become a pilot. Every morning to his push-ups, he is really a physical, but what he failed to take into account was a simple reality. And you're gonna find out, see this clip, what happens when he actually finds out that reality, which is, again, an important part of the computer decision. So, we're gonna show you what happens when Dwayne finds out the reality, finds out the reality that he failed to take into
Dwayne, come on, we have, we have to go. Oh, I'm going. Dwayne. I said I'm not. Okay, I don't care. I'm not getting on that bus again. Dwayne, for better or worse, where are your family? No, you're not my family. Okay, I don't want to be your family. I hate you fucking people. I hate you. Divorce? Bankrupt? Suicide? You fucking losers. You losers. Okay. No, please just leave me alone. Okay, please. Let's talk about the uncle. The uncle is the um, the adult you saw that was in the back with Gwen. Does anybody remember how that how this conversation went with Gwen? What happened? Set this whole thing up. Anyone? Jess. Exactly the wrong thing to say. That's exactly the reality he's trying to avoid at that moment. It's exactly the wrong thing to say. Right? Nazi first understands. Just being blunt, openly, setting, setting off that hello. So whether he could have prevented it, who knows? But he definitely didn't help out by, with what he said. Alright, let's talk about the father. Let's talk about his reaction. Good or bad? Anyone? <laughs> Come on, you guys. Seriously. Yeah, tight. Uh, the tight collection and the father was just concerned about the time he wanted to go. He was, he was like, yeah. 
Brett, not okay, taking out his moccasins, right? He, he not, not taking out his moccasins before putting on Dwayne's moccasins. All right, let's talk about the mother. Good or bad, anyone? Yeah, Erica. Right, okay, I, I love that you picked up on that. Specialists, a lot of people, and very few people pick up on that. The word sympathy there, we're going to talk about in a second the difference between sympathy and empathy. Okay? Finally, Violet. Yeah, Ronaldo. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, Alan. I'm not. I'm saying. The between Slowly put her arm around him, checking if that's what he actually needed. And then when he was kind of confirmed that by not by not giving her that negative reaction, then she went ahead and went a little further. So let's talk about the steps of this. This is called empathic listening, it's a skill. First thing, like Ronaldo just said, is stop talking. Shut up for one second. Don't try to give advice. Don't try to say I'm sorry. Erica said, I'm sorry, sympathy, right? I'm sorry, it's sympathy. Do you think he's just had his dreams crushed? Do you think he cares at all how she feels? He's just had his dreams crushed? Absolutely not. Right? So just stop talking and allow that person to express themselves. Give them that opportunity and that space to do that. Next, empathy and understanding. I understand where you're coming from. I get it. Okay. You're upset. You just lost the dream that you've been working on for a year. That is Violet could have talked when she was just kind of standing there before she went up to him. Uh, sorry. Oh, I could have talked before she went up to him. That's kind of what she would have been saying, right? Like, I understand. I get it. There's nothing I can really say to change that. Empathy and understanding. Clarify and validate. This is when she was kind of crouching next to him, getting up to him, kind of figuring out what do you need. This is about the intent. Why are they showing this behavior? What is the need behind it? What do they need? And then kind of clarifying, is it what you need? Is that actually what you need? Finally, act or don't. She went and she actually rested his head on his shoulder, right? She actually gave him what he needed. But if she hadn't felt comfortable with that, is that one who she was, if she didn't have that relationship with him? She didn't have to do that. You don't have to be the person who always is fulfilling needs for others. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to put your own needs, someone else's needs in front of yours. It's your choice whether once you figure out what they need, you actually go ahead and fulfill that need. So that's how to be, how to understand. Let's talk about how to be understood. This is how to make sure that people really understand what you're saying. People really connect with you. There's three parts of this. Ethos, integrity and credibility. Pathos, which is empathy, and logos is logic. So ethos is like being real. You see somebody who's real, somebody who, who puts themselves out there, who's just like, that's them. Like, that's not a front, that's not anything, that's just them. They're real. That's ESO. Pathos, it's about taking what you think, what you, what you know, your wants and desires, and expressing those in a way that the other person understands. So you kind of meet in the middle like that. Logos, logic. It's about being clear and precise, giving reasons why. How does this look like in your service? Let's talk about the wrong way to do this. So a student has their head down on the desk, kind of just uh, not really engaged in the lesson. Let's talk about the wrong way to do this. I do this all the time. All the time. Hey, uh, could you please, uh, could you please put your head up? No, 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 go away. All right, I'm, I'm going to check in in a few minutes. I really need to put your head up. So go away a few minutes later. See them? No. Seriously, they can't put their head up? Come on, you, you really need to get your head up. You're missing a lot of the lesson here. 
really important. Okay, lots of lightning. It's okay. I'm okay. Now go over, let's do it like that. All right, it's time to put your head up. This is your warning. Next time your card is going to be changed. Either they put their head up or I change their card, right? The wrong way to do it. I was seeking first to be understood before I understood, tried to understand. I'm talking about the right way to do this. Hey, you look tired, man. You were late, late night last night? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right, that's okay. Um, all right, so what I did first, seek first to understand, right? Empathize and accept. You look tired. You had a late late last flight. Empathize and accept. I understand. Yeah, I get tired too sometimes. It's okay. Now, you need some time to rest, huh? Clarify and validate. Is this what you need? Yeah, I'm really tired. I need some time to rest. All right. Now it's time to act. We're going to use ethos, pathos, and logos. Okay, I understand. You need some time to rest. Pathos. I understand. You need some time to rest. What I'm going to need you to do, please, could you just do it for me? Ethos, who you are. I know it's going to be really hard. Pathos. Understand it. But what I need you to do is put your head up, because that way the teacher will know that you're paying attention. I know you're paying attention, but you can't show that without looking up. Logos. Logic. Reasons why. Tell you what, this works way better than the other way. So, what we're going to do now, we're going to give you a quick review, and then we're going to take questions. We have like a minute. Okay. So, the first time we learned is being proactive. This is when you have a stimulus and a response kind of spot in the middle where you make a decision do I take responsibility for my own life or do I put blame on the environment for that? Alright, begin with the end in mind. This is the goal setting process. Congruent decisions with logic, emotions, values, and reality. The reality shift with plan, commit, prepare, centered around your vision. And then the effective action with action, motivation, and evaluation centered around your outcome. But first things first, this is your roles, your goals, scheduling your priorities, um, scheduling your priorities, not prioritizing your schedule, and then just adapting daily. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. This is about the four step process for listening. Stop talking, emphasize and accept, clarify and validate and act. And the three ways to express yourself. Ethos, uh, pathos, and logos. Done. That's it. That's all we have for you guys.